G'day guys, Blake here with another video and today is a video you're going to want to strap yourselves in for because you're not going to want to miss this. We're going to head way over east today, about two hours drive for me. We're going to go and check out Nautilus Aquarium. See Scott and the guys, it's a fantastic store with a great atmosphere. Let's jump straight into the video. Okay, so to get started, we need to know where we're going today. Nautilus Aquarium and Pet Supplies is located on Franks and Dandenong Road in Caram Downs, which I have a map on screen, but it's to the southeast of Melbourne. About two hours drive for me, but well worth the trip. Let's get this tour started. All right, guys, so as we head in the door here, I'm just gonna give you a quick pan of the floor so you get an idea. It's a huge range of everything, and I'm excited to take a deeper dive. We'll start off with the fish tanks that are available and they're in all sorts of shapes and sizes, different cabinets and just there's something for everyone. We've got all in one kits as well. Pretty much anything you would need to satisfy your fish addiction. Then uh, after that we're going to have a quick look at some of the other pet supplies. So there's stuff for your furry friends as well as the ones with fins. You can get cat stuff, dog stuff, bird stuff, probably other animal stuff as well so there's a bit of everything then in terms of mechanical equipment and gear there's all sorts of you know nets siphons water changes uh, canister filters also i really like that there's a bunch of air stones and fittings available um, internal filters sponge filters box filters lights and anything else you can put your mind to also, there's a bunch of filter media, and some of which is actually developed by the owner, Scott. Scott has the business Aquapix, and as you'll see, there's a huge range of Aquapix products that have been developed and are stocked in this store as well. I also like that there's a bunch of caves available, such as these um, angelfish breeding caves, as well as pleco caves and shrimp hides and all sorts of stuff. In terms of hardscape, there's plenty of rocks and driftwood available something for every aquascaping need. In terms of gravel, there's everything from natural stones to that rainbow gravel that people are so fond of. In terms of frozen food, there's all the usual ones available, as well as some really unique offerings, such as frozen whole fish and um, shrimp, so that's pretty cool. While we're on the topic of food, there is a huge range of food as well. There's the um, New Life Spectrum and other well-known brands, but there's also a ton of Aquapix food as well. So um, Scott has also developed a bunch of foods and I like it because it comes from a hobbyist perspective. Um, Scott, first and foremost, is a um, aquarium enthusiast just like us. So it's pretty cool to see somebody, basically one of us, come up with these products that are um, really gonna help us out to um, keep us in the hobby first and foremost, but um, give us a lot of success as we go along. Some that I really like, there's bug pellets, there's bloodworm flakes, all sorts of algae wafers, and also some freeze dried foods such as whole fish and krill as well. So pretty awesome. And uh, I'll be keen to try these out. Now we move along to some of the water buffers and that sort of thing, liquid bacteria. There's uh, slime coat uh, protectant things that contain aloe vera. KH and GH buffers for anything, whether it's goldfish, Amazonian fish, uh, African fish, doesn't matter which lake they come from, we'll be able to replicate that water using these products. Um, that is buffering the GH and KH, uh, as well as other things as well. On the topic of other things, there's also a line of liquid fertilizers, as well as um, bacterial supplements, water conditioners, uh, black water extract, which I think is really fantastic for betters and other anabantoids, uh, liquid fertilizers, and this is a very popular product, the No More Blackbeard. A lot of us struggle with Blackbeard and uh, a lot of people swear by Aquapix No More Blackbeard. The back to boost, um, I can say, Scott did open up a bottle and let me take a bit of a look and a smell, and I can confirm it is definitely live bacteria in there, which means it's gonna be the good stuff. Um, he explained to me a lot of care goes into the uh, handling and storage of this product to ensure that there's gonna be a huge amount of bacteria in there uh, for when it comes time to cycle your tank. To accompany that, there's all sorts of dechlorinators and um, ammonia products that are gonna feed that bacteria. So that, uh, as you can see by this diagram, the nitrogen cycle will be complete and you'll be ready for fish. But I like that they provide that there is sure to help out a bunch of newbies as well. 
Another thing I like is you can see that the nets are sanitized, so it's going to be a good chance that our fish are going to get um, home safely. I did also note that some of the tanks um, indicated fish weren't for sale, they're being medicated and so forth, so it's really good to see proper quarantining process happening in a local fish store. At the planted display, and next to that is a couple of better barracks where, um, as you can see, it's a recirculating system, so all these bedders get fresh water, filtered water, and heated water, and some of them look really nice, like this little lavender dumbo, and also this red crown towel that sort of took my fancy. After that, we've got some nano tanks, which I'll take a look at before we head into the main uh, meat and potatoes of the tour. Got some pretty cool little epistogrammas, some crystal shrimp, which are pretty cool as well a nice uh, yellow cherry shrimp as well, and a couple of nice little varieties of Enla as well, which is pretty awesome. So they're in the nano tanks off to the side. Then uh, once we're done having a look in there, we head into the main display. So we've got three main rows to have a look at, and I think it makes sense to start off at the cold water section. So as you can imagine, we've got all sorts of goldfish from comets to blackmores to shabunkins, and other fancy goldfish as well. As well as that, uh, we also have some more community-based cold water fish like your uh, zebra danios, that sort of thing. Other than that, uh, there's a huge range of African cichlids available here. Uh, Scott is, I think, primarily an African cichlid uh, enthusiast, so it's reflective of in his shop, which makes total sense. There's some really nice specimens and some unique ones as well. Uh, we've got a bunch of shell dwellers, which I was stoked to see. So we've got um, all sorts of ornate pinnus, brevis, and uh, all sorts of cool little shellies to check out. A bunch of uh, mabuna and um, a few peacocks in that as well. This nice little calvus here, which is pretty cool. I'm really fond of those calvus. After we have a look at all the Africans, we do have some community fish as well. All sorts of tetras, anal fish, garamis and that sort of thing. And some really, really good specimens, uh, some nice big discus as well. Live bearers such as platys and guppies. And uh, you know, take a good, good look at those discus, they deserve a bit of airtime. There's some dwarf cichlids as well, such as this nice little German blue ram. And I was pretty happy to see a couple of little rainbows as well. So. A couple of praycocks, and um, yeah, it's good to see someone stocking rainbows. These black muscow guppies look pretty nice as well, I thought, and uh, he can't look past the raminos and uh, neon tetras. Also, there's a bunch of Corydoras as well, and, and these tanks really lend themselves to spending a bit of time taking a good look inside them because you can see all sorts of nice little uh, critters that you really just wouldn't pick up if you're doing a quick scan. So, you've got some black. Venezuelan quarries there, which are really, really nice um, fish. Hopefully one day I'll pick them up. These Bulgarian green angels as well, something that you don't see every day. Also, we've got some big boys in this store here. So a pair of Polini, uh, Madagascan cichlid. Uh, we've got a uh, big red devil here, which is looking cool. Uh, we got this Fenestratum here, which is pretty awesome looking big uh, colourful fish and uh, we've also got uh, the king of Australia, we got the big barramundi, he'll be a future monster. Uh, this green terrier had babies which is pretty cool to see and a good indicator of the water quality as well as this uh, pair of blue-eyed cichlids, they're not actually convicts but uh, awesome fish nonetheless. Some oddballs as well such as some El Plecos, these scats which are a, a brackish fish, royal whiptail cats normal whiptail cats as well, and um, also some gudgeons and killifish and these really nice looking XL African butterfly fish as well. So really well-rounded store and uh, yeah, happy to tour this one today. So there you go guys, that was my tour of Nautilus Aquarium. Definitely well worth the trip and I was very, very tempted with a lot of those little shell dwellers. I'll have to head around there one time soon uh, once they get their renovations going, if not sooner but I just really want to thank Scott and the guys for um, having me. I know that they put in a mountain of work beforehand to make everything spick and span, so um, hopefully I did it justice with the video. Uh, if you like this video, it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe, and all that fun stuff. If you're in the area, definitely recommend checking out Nautilus. Other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.